So you can see here I finished sharpening and now I'm just going to go ahead and erase any extra pencil and clean up the paper before we start color. So here I'm going to show you how I am going to fix a mistake. So our next step is to add an onomatopoeia word in the negative space and I meant to do that earlier. So I would like to put that here but I have this black line here so I'm actually going to cut that part of my picture off and then attach a new piece. So you will not have to do this if you think ahead and we will talk about that before you start those steps. I'm just going to cut off part of this and then I can have that new white space in the background. So I'm just going to recycle that and then I'm going to get a new piece for that corner here. So I will reattach this here so that they go together and then you won't really notice that too much. So I'm going to use this negative space to do my onomatopoeia. Remember an onomatopoeia is a word that is associated with a sound that something makes like a pow, smash, boom, crack, wow, bang. So choose a word and we're going to put that back here in bubble letters. So I'm going to do zap. If you struggle with bubble letter words, you can just draw the regular letter and then kind of make an outline tracing of that letter and then erase that interior one. So I'm going to do zap. So it's just three letters and I'm going to get those kind of close together. If you do not need to do that way of doing bubble letters, that's fine also. So they'll often have an exclamation point and then some sort of shape around it. So it could be the cloud shape or the zigzag. You choose what you want to go around that word. Okay, and then I'm going to sharpie that. Okay, so then the next step is to get your markers out and we are going to use the primary colors. So get those out as well as you can use either your black marker or your sharpie as well. So it's going to be primary colors with black and we are gonna be deciding before we start which shapes are going to be the Bende dots and which shapes might be fully colored in with a color. So you can see here, I am starting to do red dots in the hair. So you decide what color and which areas will have those colors and if you're gonna do dots or filled in with a solid color. So I'm kind of going in a line to keep track of where I am, but I'm not lining in them up on the second row below, just to have them a little off. So you can see these don't line up, they're in between the next ones. So that way I can have some consistency as I go through. Okay, so I finished this whole section. Now this is still hair. I could have done the red dots, but I'm gonna probably color that a different color you do want to start thinking about what color is going to go next to other shapes so that they stand out well. So I decided to do the face with just solid yellow. Again though I'm leaving shapes not yellow so that I can possibly do dots or a different color. I'm going to keep working. So here again I'm thinking about moving things around so I did the blue dots in the eyebrows and I did the blue dots in the background of the zap and then I'm going to probably add maybe one more of these repeated cloud shapes so that I could add some more color in there. Um, that's up to you if you want to do more than one of those. 